Do you know where those who died are now? What is the condition of a person once they die? Well, I want to say to you, my dear family of Mana, that for me, it will be very difficult to answer this question in just 15 minutes of devotional. And for this reason, I would like to offer you something. Good morning, I am Pastor Carlos Rios, and this is our devotional Mana, a daily adventure with God. I believe that one of the topics that calls our attention the most, and perhaps sometimes those who do not read the Bible, do not know the biblical posture of what happens to a person once they die. And so today, I'm going to explain to you the most I can in our 15 minutes of devotional. Very well. When Jesus died on the cross, he was hung next to two thieves. One of the two says to the Lord, Remember me when you are in your kingdom. Jesus answers, Truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Where is this paradise? What was Jesus referring to? Well, I want to talk to you exactly about what this biblical expression means. And in order to do this, I want you to join me in Luke chapter 16. And so take your notepad because it is very important to what we're going to take notes on today. Luke chapter 16. Remember that the Bible talks to us in parables and it also gives us true stories. The subtitle of Luke 16, 19 talks to us about a rich man and Lazarus. It doesn't say this is a parable. This is a true story. And look at what it says. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. At his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus covered with sores and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. The time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was in torment, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. This passage is talking to us about a scene. But do not worry, we are going to be talking about the resurrection during two weeks. And throughout this time, we'll have a space where we will be discussing whether heaven is real and whether hell is real. And so we will talk about each part. And so today I'm going to explain the best I can, but in time we will discuss it in more detail. But for now, let's focus in here because the evangelist Luke is giving us a very interesting scenario, especially because here there is a difference between before Christ died and after Christ dies. Here we will see a radical and complete change. And so notice that Luke is saying that two men died. The first man who dies is Lazarus, and it says that he is taken to Abraham's side. Well, when it says that the rich man dies, it says that he is taken to Hades. All the way from the Old Testament up to Jesus, it was said that everyone who died descended. If a person was a believer, they would descend. If they were not a believer, they also descended. However, when they descended, there were two places. One was Abraham's bosom, which was the place of the just, those who had believed, for those who had the hope of salvation for their lives, while those who did not believe went to Hades. In fact, this very same text tells us that these two places were divided by a great valley, by a great cliff, to the point that, look at what it says, I'm going to read Luke chapter 16, and it says in verse 25, But Abraham said, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, and you are tormented. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot, nor can those from here 
there pass to us. So this is the place that the Bible describes as a place that was descending. And we will get into more detail later on because it's difficult to get into much detail in 15 minutes. And so they descended and those who were just went to the bosom of Abraham and those who did not believe went to Hades. There is something interesting here. It has been preached that in certain circles and be very careful because something that is untrue has been preached and it is that Jesus went down to Hades. And in regards to this, allow me to tell you what the problem is. And it is that we have misinterpreted some biblical scriptures. In the Hebrew scriptures, the place used to describe where people go after they die is Seol. And it simply means the place of the dead or the place where the souls or the spirits go. The Greek word used in the New Testament to describe Seol is Hades. That also refers to the place of the dead. Other scriptures in the New Testament indicate that both Seol and Hades are temporary places where the souls are kept awaiting the resurrection and final judgment. While Revelations 20 verses 12 to 15 gives us a clear description of both, hell is what the Bible calls the lake of fire. It is the final and permanent place of judgment for those who are lost. Meanwhile, Hades is a temporary place. And so many, many people talk about Hades and the lake of fire as if they were both hell. And this causes confusion. Jesus did not go to a place of torment after his death, but he did go to Hades. And so do you see how important it is to use the biblical terminology? based on their original languages. And so the Bible says that this man received a promise from the Lord, and it is that he will be in paradise. And so the Bible tells us that in Luke 16, there we see the place where they go. Where are the dead now? And so for this, let's go to a passage in Matthew. And so join me in the, gas the Gospel of Matthew chapter 12. And read with me, please, verses 39 and 40. That here will give us a very interesting piece of information. And it says, But he answered and said to them, An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Wow, when Jesus talks to this man about paradise and says to him, Today you will be with me in paradise. Now look at what Matthew chapter 12 is telling us. That Jesus was to be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. And what Luke 16 calls Abraham's bosom in the depths of the earth. There in Matthew again, look at chapter 27 and read verse 51 with me. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth quaked, and the rocks were split, and the graves were open, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. Wow, how I love this topic. But allow me to tell you that there is no other information in the Bible in regards to who these were who resurrected. But we can assume that these came out of Abraham's bosom. And so when Jesus went there, Jesus was to fulfill a task. As I mentioned, Abraham's bosom is only viable up to this day, up to the day we're talking about now, the day that Jesus descended. Because look at what Jesus did. Join me in Ephesians in verse 4, excuse me, chapter 4, and in Ephesians 4, if you read beginning verse 8, therefore he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. And so what is this that he ascended about? Now this, he ascended, what does it mean? 
but that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth. He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. The Bible says that Jesus, that they descended to where we just mentioned, to the middle of the earth, to Abraham's bosom. And so what did he do according to, to the Apostle Paul in Ephesians 4? He took all of those who were there, those who had believed in him, those who had placed their hope in him, those who were in Abraham's bosom. He rose with them to heaven. He ascended with them. This point is definitive because it is saying that up to the day that Jesus died and before his resurrection, everyone descended. But the Bible says that from this moment on, when someone dies, pay close attention to this, when someone dies, those who believe go to heaven. The believers go up to a place called God's presence. But in turn, those who do not believe continue in the place that was called Hades. It is not directly hell, but it is a place of torment, as it says in Luke chapter 16. And we'll talk about this further when we talk about whether heaven is real or not and the characteristics of heaven. But in Luke chapter 16, when this man is talking to, with Abraham, he says to him, in Luke chapter 24, verse 16, excuse me, Luke 16, verse 24, he says, Then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. This place of Hades is a place of torment. The word torment is repeated here four times, and I'm going to explain this. Hades is a place where people wait, a temporary place, as I will just, as I will clarify. Hell is a different place, and I'll explain this in more detail later on. And so, are we clear up to now? The Lord takes all of those who waited and hoped in Him, who believed in Him, and He ascends with them into heaven. And so, what is it? What is important for us to understand today? Notice that Ephesians 4 says, When he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Romans chapter 10 verse 6. Romans 10 6 says, But the righteousness of faith speaks in this way. Do not say in your heart, Who will ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down from above. Or who will descend into heaven? into the abyss that is to bring Christ up from the dead. And so do you see here it is clarifying to us that Christ was amongst the dead during those three days and three nights that he died. But what does it say? It says that while amongst the dead he brought them up into heaven. Do you recall when we were talking about Luke chapter 16 and I mentioned that Abraham's bosom was made up of two parts. I said, one was Hades, Abraham's bosom, and in the middle was a great valley, a great cliff. And so when Jesus ascends, this place remains completely designated as Hades. And there's a detail that calls my attention greatly. It's incredible how I love this verse in Isaiah. I do not know if you have read it or if you did read it, you understood what it meant. Isaiah chapter 5 verse 14 Therefore, Sheol has enlarged itself and opened its mouth beyond measure. Their glory and their multitude and their pomp and he who is jubilant shall descend into it. It says that Sheol is enlarged Wow, this is tremendous. Do you notice that airports have more and more passengers each time? And so the airports have to be expanded. So let me give you a piece of information. Hell is being enlarged, expanded. And why? Because it has more customers each day. And pay very close attention when we talk about hell because I do not want you to think that this is something that pastors made up. 
that the church has made up to instill fear in people. No, we're going to talk about this, and I will explain to you biblically what hell is, how it is, how the Bible speaks of it, and how real it is, what it is and what it is not. And so, once the Lord brings the believers into heaven, they no longer descend after they have ascended into heaven. And Hades is enlarged. And there, those who do not believe descend into Hades. And so, another interesting question for us to continue. Where is paradise now? Based on this that we have discussed. Join me. I want to confirm what I just mentioned to you in regards to the Lord ascending and bringing the believers with him into heaven, into paradise. Remember that the Apostle Paul had a vision and the Lord took him to a place. Look at what it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body I do not know, or whether out of the body I do not know, God knows, such a one was caught up to the third heaven. And I saw, I know such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows how he was caught up into paradise and heard inexpressible words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. And so do you see here, Paul is explaining to us that the third heaven is the place of paradise. And so where is paradise now after Christ died? It is up above in heaven. And so what happens when someone dies and the person is a believer? He or she goes to heaven. And what is heaven called? Read Second Corinthians with me. Again, go back to chapter 5. Look at what it says in verse 6. The Apostle Paul says, So we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, yes, well pleased, rather, to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. So he is saying that when we die, we are absent from the body. Because what is Paul saying happens to the body? It dies. But we are present with the Lord. In other words, we go to the Lord's presence. We go into heaven, which is called what? God's presence. Wow, how beautiful. Now, since I don't have much time and this is quite long, we will continue tomorrow. Father, thank you for this day and thank you for these encouraging words. How wonderful to know that it is worthwhile to hope and to trust in you, to await in you. That definitely when you gave that promise to that man, that today he would be in paradise with you. We have the assurance and the security that to believe in you gives hope to all mankind. Thank you for each listener of Mana, and I ask that this scripture that we are studying this week be of much edification for all of us. We commend ourselves to you, and we ask for your blessing in Christ Jesus. Amen and amen. And I await for you tomorrow. Blessings to all.